everybody. Haley Gibson here. Today I want to talk to you about um, urinary tract infections, otherwise known as UTIs for short. So urinary tract infection is most common in women occurring in only one male for every eight females. It actually affects millions of children and adults annually and is the second leading cause of infection in the body. Some fun facts for you there. Um, some individuals are susceptible to reoccurring infections. And this not only is frustrating, but it weakens the total health and well-being of an individual. So fortunately, there are several measures you can take to decrease the likelihood of getting a UTI, as well as combat the infection naturally. And I'm going to go over five um, phases, key strategies to really heal UTIs naturally today. Before we get started, quick little information about myself. My name is Haley Gibson. I'm a registered nurse and functional diagnostic nutritionist. Um, I work with clients all over the world. I work with Dr. David Jockers in helping people get to the root cause of their issues um, and solve their problems naturally. So we really promote good education and healthy clients. So these are just some pictures of my life to the right. You have myself with my fiance. We were doing Conquer the Gauntlet, loads of fun. Down to the left, we were at one of my good friend's weddings. And this is kind of a workout gang that all hangs out together. So <laughs> you see a lot of flexing muscles, but it was a great time. So on to the information. So what are the causes of an infection. Um, any organ which urine passes through is susceptible to infection. Um, e. coli related infections are commonly to blame for about 90% of infections in the bladder, the urethra, the ureters, and the kidneys. Um, e. coli stands for Escherichia coli, and these are normal in the colon and near the anus, but can generally take up route following the opening of the urethra where they migrate and populate within the urinary tract. So what I mean by that, if you look down at stage one on this slide, it says colonization. So think of a coli, which is usually in the colon. If it migrates, and this can be done after going to the bathroom and you wipe back to front, um, this can cause the spread of that E. coli bacteria into the urethra, which is the little opening. Um, for men, it's at the head of the penis, and for women, it is right above the vaginal canal. So the urethra itself is a small opening, and what can happen is bacteria can go up into that hole and begin to colonize. And whenever it colonizes, it continues to grow, is what this means. It grows, it replicates, and then it can migrate. So it can actually migrate up into the bladder. Bacterial infection causes acute symptoms. Um, we'll go over the symptoms here in a moment. But if it's left untreated, it can lead to more serious complications like a kidney infection. And we'll talk more so about that because you can see that the bladder and the kidneys are connected. So if that proliferation of the bacteria keeps going, you can have more serious complications. All right, so this is just kind of how it happens. First, you have to have the bacteria present, and then we need some kind of opening, some kind of area for the bacteria to get into. And then we need um, an environment where the bacteria can thrive and continue living and growing. And then it continues proliferating, and then we can have, if you look at stage four, pyelonephritis, the infection of the renal tissues, the functional cells, otherwise known as parenchyma, it causes an inflammatory response. And this is called pyelonephritis, and it can be really painful. Um, and then after that, it can even lead to an acute kidney injury, which is pretty serious and um, usually ends up in hospitalization. So there's the stages of a urinary tract infection. So let's talk about the elevated risk. For UTIs. So children are at a greater risk of developing UTIs and are more susceptible to kidney trauma. Um, symptoms usually go unnoticed in children is the reason why. So in pregnant women, UTIs pose a special concern because they are not only common, but they increase the threat of preterm delivery. Other 
Risk factors include things like diabetes, taking birth control for a long time, sexual activity, menopause, and any problem that causes an obstruction to the urinary tract, like kidney stones or an enlarged prostate. So here are some other risk factors. Um, we're not going to really discuss all of these, but I know in the hospital, one thing we always looked out for with our patients was if they have um, a Foley catheter, an indwelling catheter, which is simply a tube that goes up into your urethra and resides in your bladder. And this is used when people have issues passing urine. Um, so what happens is bacteria can get around this tube and then it can be placed up into the urethra and provide an environment for this bacteria to grow. So recent antibiotic use is very common for people getting um, UTIs, and we'll talk more so about that. If you're holding your urine all day long, you're highly susceptible to getting a UTI. Um, the urine sits in your bladder, and it continues to just become more concentrated, more concentrated, and this can irritate your bladder and essentially lead to um, UTIs. So please don't hold your bladders all day. Um, frequent or recent sexual intercourse, um, if there's bacteria present on either one of the genitalia, this can lead to a bacterial infection in the urethra. Um, because it is passed by touching, it can absolutely be passed by touching. Um, if you have issues with vesicourethral um, reflux, this causes urinary retention and allows more time for bacterial growth. So if you have any kind of issues with the muscles around your urethra and there's any kind of backflow of urine, this can um, leave you at risk for UTIs. So females actually have a shorter urethra. So because of this, they're more susceptible to UTIs. Their urethra is also closer to their rectum and vaginal canal. So this also increases their likelihood of getting a UTI. Um, pregnancy is another risk factor. And then there are some genetic tendencies. So if you have issues with um, an immunoglobulin known as IgA, you may be more susceptible not only to infections in the bladder, but also infections in the gut. Um, maybe infections that most people fight off when they ingest food. You may have issues overcoming these. Reason being, IgA is considered an antibody. It is one type of antibody, and it is present in the endothelial linings. And what I mean by that is it's present in our mucosa, so our mouth, our digestive tract, um, our vaginal canal, um, the urethra, these linings that protect us along our digestive tract, basically. So if you have any kind of issue secreting this immunoglobulin, you're going to have a weakened immune system leaving you at risk. So let's talk about the symptoms of a urinary tract infection. So we kind of talked about how it happens. So if you think about if bacteria is present in the urethra and it goes up to the bladder, which is the bottom organ circled here, and then say it travels up the next tubes and on up into the kidney, you may experience flank pain, which is also known as lower back pain, and it will be on the sides of your spine. So it could be localized into one kidney, and it could also be both. So it could be... Um, symmetrical lower back pain or it could be in just one side. Typically you will come down with a fever whenever you have some kind of infection. Um, they do release things that cause your body to reset its temperature in order to fight off the infection. Um, you most likely will feel exhausted, so malaise is another word for that. Um, another way to pick up on it is if you have blood work done and you see your white blood cell count in your urine is elevated, this can be a sign that you have a UTI. Um, this should, of course, be correlated with any kind of symptoms that you're experiencing. So that would just be one part of a diagnosis. Um, urinary symptoms similar to cystitis. So cystitis, what is that? 
That's a bladder infection. So itis means inflammation. Um, cyst means bladder. So inflammation of the bladder is how I like to think about it. So if you're if you have a significant sense of urgency, like when you have to pee, you have to pee right now. Or if you have just increased urinary frequency, you're going to the bathroom a lot. Or you go to the bathroom and you get up and you're like, I could go again. And you go sit back down and maybe nothing comes out, but you're like, I feel like I have to urinate. This can be a sign of a urinary tract infection. Painful urination. This can be a sign. Um, pain above the pubic region, white blood cells and bacteria in the urine, and we kind of commented on this earlier, but it's more common in women. So what are the medical concerns? So we go to the doctor and we are diagnosed with a UTI and antibiotics are prescribed. So let's talk about what some of the short and long-term consequences are of that. So urinary tract infections were once easily treated with antibiotics in the 1980s and remain the most excessively used medications for UTI care today. However, emerging evidence reveals how antibiotic, antibiotics damage our health and is no longer the most effective approach. So we really need to second guess using an antibiotic for every infection. So what can antibiotics do? So conventional medicine may have its place in the world Obviously, I'm a nurse. I fully believe in conventional medicine. I just think that we need to bring natural medicine world and conventional medicine world together in order to have the most effective care for our patients. So treating every case of urinary tract infections with antibiotics is really not a good solution. Antibiotics disturb the total microbial balance that resides in the human body so rather than isolating the harmful bacteria causing infection, antibiotics kill beneficial bacteria, which are critical components of an optimally functioning immune system. Approximately 25% of individuals treated for UTI will experience a reoccurrence 6 to 12 months later. Bacteria are not the only microorganisms affected by antibiotics. When the balance of the um, gut flora is upset, Candida albicans and other fungi are less inhibited to grow and may lead to yeast infection. So what I'm saying is when we're taking an antibiotic, we are killing off good bacteria. The good bacteria play a big role in our immune system in order to combat infection. Um, it plays a big role in a lot of things. But if we're leaving that window growth or that window open for growth, um, we're more susceptible to infection, particularly with candida. Candida is a yeast that's common in the digestive tract, and whenever it finds an opportunity to grow, it takes it. It takes it really quickly, and this can lead to a whole multitude of issues. So high rates of antibiotic use is contributing to the increasing numbers of resistant bacterial strains and loss of antibiotic efficacy. efficacy efficiency. Um, greater than half the number of individuals who receive antibiotics for UTIs in other countries see no benefit as a consequence of antibiotic resistance. Um, the World Health Organization released a report citing that the treatment of urinary tract infections with antibiotics is one of the top causes for an increase in antimicrobial resistance worldwide. So what is antimicrobial resistance? And why are antibiotics causing it? Well, bacteria, they do contain DNA and RNA. And whenever they are exposed to antibiotics, they're also evolutionary. So they adapt. Their DNA can begin to adapt and they can begin to produce, whether it is cell walls or um, antigens or um, other things like a biofilm to protect themselves, they're able to avoid being attacked by the antibiotics they adapt to them and our medications are not adapting fast enough to the bacterial adaptations in order to continue killing them off so now we've created superbugs that um, either medicine can't handle and sometimes 
you know, natural treatments can't handle it either. So we need to be really careful about over-prescribing antibiotics. And if we can go the natural route, we really need to try to knock it out naturally. And I'm going to go over um, very important steps to overcome it naturally, I promise. So what are... We can go ahead and talk about those now, actually. Phases to healing urinary tract infections. It's not as simple as taking a prescription or a supplement. There are five phases you must apply in order to truly heal a UTI and not just cover up the symptoms. I'm going to explain this in more detail. So first, we need to flush out bacteria. Um, natural diuretics are one of nature's best ways you can maintain the health of your urinary system. Cleanse and disinfect your urinary tract to prevent and treat a UTI in the following ways. So cranberry, lots of people are all about cranberry juice. So let's talk about this. So cranberry juice is great. It, for good reason, um, is popular. Cranberry concentrate reduces the incidence of recurrent UTIs because it prevents bacteria like E. coli that we talked about from adhering or sticking to the surface along the urinary tract. The primary um, micronutrient responsible for this is proanthocyanidin A. So this assists in regulating urine pH. It relieves discomfort associated with urination and it boosts the immune response by activating the macrophages to improve wound healing and reduce inflammation. It also reduces the risk for asymptomatic bacteria, um, which can cause the presence of bacteria to go unnoticed due to a lack of symptoms. So don't just go and buy um, concentrated cranberry juice. This is super high in sugar and will feed the bacteria more so than kill it. So drink one ounce of organic cranberry juice and eight ounces of water daily with one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar every two waking hours until you knock out the infection. This is a great way to do this. Um, you want it to be organic with no added sugar, so be sure to read your label and check that out. So I mentioned apple cider vinegar. Get more about that. Um, this is a really simple strategy. If you don't own organic apple cider vinegar raw with mother is the correct terms that you want your labels to say, then I really encourage you to go out and buy some. This stuff is amazing for so many different things. And we're just going to talk about it in relation to UTIs today. Um, it contains the powerful antimicrobial compound called acetic acid. Acetic acid is one of the best natural disinfecting compounds that kills resistant bacteria and creates a favorable environment for healthy bacteria to thrive. It also strengthens the immune system by boosting your body's detoxification pathways. So apple cider vinegar, I just talked about how to incorporate it with cranberry juice. So we'll say that again. Drink one ounce of organic cranberry juice and eight ounces of water with one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. You can do this every two hours until the infection is gone. Um, you can also continue drinking apple cider vinegar every day. One tablespoon in four to eight ounces of water before a meal is a great way to increase stomach acid. Um, another supplement that's really great. It's called D-Monos. Um, if you use this along with cranberry and probiotics, this is one of the best treatment options. It's called D-Monos, D-M-A-N-N-O-S-E. In a clinical study consisting of 308 women with a history of recurring UTIs, researchers learned that the supplementation of D-Monos significantly prevented the reoccurrence of an infection. Um, how does it work? So compared to those administered antibiotics, Demonos patients also reported much fewer and milder side effects, if any. Demonos works by adhering to E. coli so that the bacteria cannot cling to the bladder wall in a force similar to static cling. The harmful bacteria is then readily able to be excreted with urine. So Essentially what it does, I said at the beginning, bacteria have to actually adhere or stick 
to the wall of the urethra and the bladder and the ureters, well, D-monos prevents it from sticking to the wall. If it can't stick to the wall and adhere to it, then it cannot grow. So that's how it prevents that. Um, similar to cranberry juice. So we actually use the brand Jay-Z D-monos. Um, we take two caps or one gram every two to three hours until the infection is gone. It's definitely worth a shot. Um, hydration is super key. So super hydrate your body with purified water in order to strengthen the health of your immune system. Remaining well hydrated naturally supports the removal of bacteria from the urinary tract and enhances detoxification pathways in the body. You may feel the urge to urinate frequently from having a UTI. Drinking fluids often will provide the pressure required for a forceful stream of urine to flush bacteria away. So if you're struggling with a UTI, I recommend shooting for a gallon of water a day. A gallon of water a day is a great goal regardless, but especially if you have a UTI. So if the taste of apple cider vinegar and cranberry juice isn't to your liking, there are plenty of other natural ways you can flush bacteria out of your system. So you can juice parsley. This increases urine flow. This is a natural diuretic. You can prepare an herbal tea with dandelion leaf, um, burdock root, and nettle leaf. This reduces inflammation. You can snack on raw celery. This is um, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. It also has lots of antioxidants. You can add celery seeds to pickled vegetables, dips, dressings, and um, more to increase urine output. Supplement with juniper berry concentrate to prevent the proliferation of bacteria and eliminate microbes in the urine. And then bring up my parsley slide. This just shows some of the health benefits of parsley. Um, we would be using it for the immune system and the natural diuretic effects. Parsley, good stuff. So we want to strengthen the immunity. Zinc is a great way to strengthen the immunity. So without zinc, more than 200 enzymes that rely on this mineral cannot function. And this causes immune dysfunction and metabolic disturbance. So this is vital. It boosts the surveillance of the immune system. Um, let's see. So in children diagnosed with a UTI, zinc supplementation was significantly shown to reduce frequency of urination and pain in clinical testing. Treatment of UTI with zinc was further shown to enhance the recovery process of damaged tissue and prevent kidney problems. So we actually have zinc in our GI regulator, which has a couple other things that I'm going to talk about. But vitamin C is, of course, super important for overcoming infection. It upregulates biological agents that um, try to destroy pathogenic invaders, and it increases the absorption of bioflavonoids in our diet and equips the body to handle tissue trauma and stress. So you can add more vitamin C by eating raw, red, or yellow peppers. You can have citrus fruits like lemon, lime, um, cauliflower, broccoli, kale, spinach, leeks, chives, tomatoes. All of these are full of vitamin C. Um, I also recommend supplementing with vitamin C if you do have an infection. So GI regulator is an antimicrobial that we use, but you can use other antimicrobials like garlic. So this is um, really effective in suppressing inflammation and providing immune support. Yeah, echinacea is another one. Echinacea tea, you can do yogi tea or traditional medicinals. Both of these are great tea brands. Um, you can use echinacea tea anytime you have an upper respiratory tract infection as well as a urinary tract infection. It contains um, plant compounds that can be taken in pill form or as a tea. I prefer tea. And you can get this at any grocery store. Um, golden seal, otherwise known as berberine, is responsible for effectively destroying E. coli. Berberine is found in the GI regulator that we use. So, yeah, we're not going to go into too much detail about that one. Grapefruit seed extract is another one found in GI regulator, and this has been found to contain antibacterial properties as well. Um, 
grandpa, it affects against a broad range of both gram positive and gram negative organisms. It actually decreased the growth of pathogenic organisms in urine like Staphylococcus aureus, um, Klebsiella, and a couple other tough bugs. So yeah, reuse GI regulator. Kind of talked about that. So there's lots of different antimicrobials you can use, is what I'm getting at for this urinary tract infection. So then we have essential oils. Oregano oil is another um, natural antimicrobial. It fights lots of infections, and pretty much any time you get sick, oregano oil is something good to have on hand. So essential oils have been used in natural medicine to treat bacterial infection, and I mean, this dates all the way back to um, ancient times when the Chinese, the Romans, the Greeks, the Egyptians, they used these things. The Chinese historically used myrrh oil for a wealth of benefits, including its ability to help reduce pain. Myrrh oil has since been shown to suppress inflammation and prevent infection using a variety of mechanisms to enhance the immune system. Um, so oils like clove and cinnamon, these were shown to have a synergistic effect on inhibiting the growth of E. coli in a study. Clove oil contains anti-inflammatory properties which support pain relief while cinnamon oil possesses antiseptic properties and inhibits bacterial growth. So there's your um, two-pack combo. Those are really powerful when used together. So that was cinnamon and clove oil. Sage has also been shown to produce significant inhibitory effects on the growth of UTI causing bacteria. So one study showed that sage oil had a 79% inhibition rate on the growth of bacteria. It killed E. coli with 96% effectiveness and destroyed 100% of the more severe bacterial strains like Klebsiella and Enterobacter. Really awesome. These are just natural compounds that you can get easily. Um, oregano oil is so combative against inhibiting bacteria. Um, You'll want to avoid taking your daily probiotic at the same time. Oregano oil contains antibacterial properties which inhibits the growth of several bacterial strands. So this plant extract also contains powerful anti-inflammatory properties and upregulates cytokines activity to fight infections. Cytokines are basically our little messengers in the immune system that make everything work. So let's talk about how to prevent a urinary tract infection. So when you go to the bathroom, always wipe front to back. We talked about how if you wipe back to front, you can actually push some of the bacteria towards your urethra. Um, anytime you engage in sexual intercourse, go pee right afterwards. Go to the bathroom, and that will help um, flush out any bacteria that has landed in your system. Um, you'll definitely want to wash your genitals as well anytime after sexual intercourse. Um, steer clear of feminine hygiene products. These can actually upset the delicate bacterial balance. So um, definitely just want to use natural things on your genitalia. Please don't hold your urine. Um, as a nurse, I've experienced getting a UTI because I held my urine, which was crazy. Um, nurses don't really get to go to the bathroom sometimes, and when you hold it all day, kind of talked about this, but it concentrates in your bladder and leaves you more susceptible to a UTI. And I ended up getting a UTI that led into a kidney infection, and I had the chills and fever, the shaking in bed, um, sweating, and it was terrible. So I had to go to the emergency room for that one because I let it linger for too long. I didn't know what was going on at the time. This was several years ago. Um, you're going to drink lots of water, flush out the toxins, take showers, not baths. So when you're sitting in a bathtub, you have to think that everything that's been on the floor of that bathtub is also hanging out with you in the water and just floating around. So be sure to really clean your bathtub. I know we recommend Epsom salt baths a lot. Just make sure that your bathtub is clean and make sure that if you have a UTI, you're not taking a bath. 
you don't want an already infected um, organ to be submerged into a reservoir that contains bacteria. So I would avoid baths if you have a UTI. Get rid of the UTI, then you can take your Epsom salt bath. Um, whenever you're requested to have an antibiotic, just ask your doctor, do I really have a bacterial infection? Was it cultured? Did you see the specific type of bacteria that was present? Um, just ask questions. Be involved in your care. I just encourage that. All right. Wearing cotton underwear that is fitted and not too tight to avoid friction. Um, you can avoid heat and moisture. That can help prevent a UTI as well. All right, just about done. So one of the biggest things you can do for a UTI, um, we eat every day, most of us do. So we gotta really be particular about what we're putting into our body so that what we're putting in is helping us um, be healthy and fight infection and regulate our processes the way that we're supposed to. So we should have lots of non-starchy vegetables, um, lots of good, healthy, high-quality fats. So avocados and olive oil, um, grass-fed butter, eggs, and coconut oil. These are great um, fat sources. And then lots of non-starchy vegetables. You want low-glycemic fruits like berries and lemons and limes. We really want to limit our carbohydrate and sugar intake. So these foods block zinc absorption and they contribute to a weakened immunity. So this just increases inflammation and then increases the likelihood of the bacteria to be begin growing and spreading. Adding probiotic rich foods to your diet is also really key. Um, drink beverages concentrated with beneficial bacteria. So kombucha, which is fermented tea, and then kefir, which is um, a fermented dairy, you want grass-fed organic, of that is great. And then there's also coconut water um, kefir that you can use. There's also pickled vegetables, grass-fed yogurt, raw asparagus, and leeks. These also have good probiotics. Um, sauerkraut is a good one. Taking a good probiotic can also help your body balance the flora and fight off infection as well. Good clean protein is key for our amino acids. And then um, fiber from nuts and seeds. Uh, we actually want to have smaller portions of this. One thing that happens when we try to go to a lower carbohydrate diet is we consume a ton of nuts and seeds. Just be mindful that these are harder on the digestive tract. Um, so you don't want to consume a ton of them. Just a handful throughout the day is enough. They are a great source of fatty acids as well as protein. We talked about fermented foods and then natural sweeteners. We really want to use stevia. Um, limit the amount of raw honey you're using. It's fine, but just limit it. Um, grade B maple syrup, this is another one that's fine, but you just want to limit the consumption because these do have natural sugars in them. Um, coconut sugar, same thing. Xylitol and monk fruit, these two are fine as well as long as you're not sensitive to them. So that concludes my presentation. I hope that you learned something. My name is Haley. I'm um, available to you if you have any questions. Um, I encourage you to email me at nutrition at drjockers.com. I work with people locally and long distance, so we do phone and Skype consultations. We review labs. We have lab testing available. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one consultations, and what we like to do is get a big picture of what's going on with our clients and help them find out what is the root cause of their issues and help um, custom tailor a diet and supplementation plan specifically for them and we work together i believe that's about it so we just enjoy educating and spreading the word about how to live healthier lives so i really hope that you enjoyed this and learned something today have a wonderful day